So where does we want to get that exponent of negative one? You combine um, the negative five and the four. Okay, by by adding them together, right? Negative five and four add together to make negative one. Um, here's kind of the hard thing <coughs> about this: we don't really have a way to picture what raising something to the negative five means, like having negative five factors or something like that. But we did talk about yesterday, just for an example, like a to the third times a to the fourth. When we multiply two things together that have the same base, uh, we add their exponents. Now how did we justify that we add them rather than multiply them or whatever? Yeah? Right. Right. Right, you got uh, three A's you're multiplying together. You got four A's you're multiplying together. You multiply all those together. Together you have the three plus the four. You have seven factors of A. My hope would be that by seeing that and being able to recreate that on your papers or in your in your brains, you'll never make the mistake of saying, for instance, A cubed times A to the fourth is A to the twelfth. But if we multiply these two things together to have the same base, they do have the same base, we can add their exponents together. It's raised to the negative one. Okay. So what mistake does she make in her final step? If you haven't written something down for that, I'd like you to take a second and write some kind of an explanation. Write the only a quick little note to tell her exactly what you did wrong. Something. Well, what mistake did she make? Are we gonna have to take turns again? Yeah. She just stuck in negative sign and thought it was the same thing as negative. Okay. Misinterpreted that negative in the exponent as making the number negative, which is not correct. That negative, so I said this to my sixth period class, I said it just like this yesterday. This negative exponent has nothing to do, nothing to do, nothing to do, absolutely not a thing to do with whether or not this number is negative. Whether or not this number is negative depends on whether there's a negative here or maybe a negative out here. Right? That's actual multiplication by negative one. This doesn't, no, it doesn't have anything to do with whether it's negative. Okay? This has to do with how many times you multiply uh, this by itself and well then, what is the negative about then? Yeah. You move it down into the denominator. Down into the denominator, right? We could do that with uh, a, a regular number, like an integer, or we could do it with a fraction. Okay? So, let's say the negative exponent does not have. So let's take uh, what, what Chance just said, 2 thirds to the negative 1 means take this, that thing, put it in the denominator 1 over 2 thirds. Okay, I like to draw this nice and big so that I know that this fraction is in the denominator. Okay. Well now we're dividing 1 by 2 thirds. How do we divide 1 by 2 thirds? The calculator. No, sir. Mm -hmm. 
multiply that one by the reciprocal of two thirds, which is three halves, one times three halves, which is not one and three halves, but one multiplied by three halves, one times anything itself. Three halves. So the negative exponent doesn't have one thing at all to do with whether or not the number itself is negative. Okay. Uh, the only sort of exception, even though it's not an exception at all, is let's say you take negative 2 to the third power. Now we actually have negativeness involved in the problem. What does it mean to raise something to the third power? Okay. But the thing that we want to multiply by itself is a negative 2. It's inside the parentheses here, and the third power applies to the whole thing. So negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2. Well, these two multiplied together will be a positive, right? Because negative times negative is positive. Okay? That'll be a positive 4. Positive 4 times a negative 2, right? A lone negative 2 by itself, a lone negative number, will result in a negative 8. Okay? Now, if we did the same number, negative 2 raised to the second power, that'd be negative 2 times negative 2. That would give us positive 4. Okay? So, this number is not telling this number to be negative, okay? Uh, but the number of times that we multiply factors of negative two together results in a negative or in a positive, okay? And it's worth mentioning right now that if we write instead these things, they're different. They're telling us to do different things. This is saying multiply the number by itself three times. What number do we want to multiply by itself three times? Negative two. Not negative two. This tells me to multiply negative two by itself three times. This tells me to multiply two by itself three times. Make it negative. No matter what it is. What's that? No matter what the result is, make it the opposite of whatever it is, yeah? So two to the third is positive eight. If we make it positive eight negative, it'll be negative eight. Now, it turns out, we get the same thing, either way, but over here, uh, 2 squared is what I meant to write. 2 squared is 4, and then we make it negative, we get negative 4. It's different. Okay. So the reason I wrote all that is that, that there is the, the kind of relationship that exponents have with numbers being negative, but it all came about because the number was negative to start with. This has absolutely nothing to say about whether or not this should be negative. This does. Okay. Yeah? What if it was imaginary with maybe one exponent? Well, then the imaginary would still go in the denominator. That's all the negative exponents mean. Okay? So if it was i to the negative one, that would mean one over i. Okay. What if it was i with a like, i to the I to the I to the fifth? Yeah. And you just like keep going to eventually like get back to I and they just on the Are you saying this I to the I to the fifth? Yeah. Is that possible? Possible. Weird things happen when we have I and the exponent. We don't need to worry about it though. At this level, we'll be fine if we don't worry about it. Okay. <coughs> All right, we'll continue on to the next problem. So we see Cecil's doing some work. He remembers that there's this property that says you can multiply two things together and raise them to some power. That can do a to the m times b to the m. He's trying to use that property. But apparently something went wrong. Didn't do it correctly. So why is it incorrect? Take a second to look at it. to give it to the five. Right, five a lot of times gets forgotten. If there's a number out there uh, to the far left, it gets forgetful, forgotten a lot. A lot of times people are applying this power to this guy too, that's not. If we wanted to apply the negative two to the five, we would do it this way, okay? But still, no, um, it's not what it was. So five 
is raised to the first. It has its own exponent of one. S has an exponent of negative two. T has an exponent of four. So uh, it should raise five to negative three as well. Okay, so raise that. Um, so let's ignore that for a second. Let's just look at what he had before, just the stuff that's in blue or purple or whatever. Um, so when he goes from here to there, y is t to the 12th in the denominator. Let's go ahead. Talk about it right away. Yeah, because it's rose to the negative 12. Hmm? It's being risen, raised to the negative 12 power, and we can interpret that as actually belonging in the denominator. Okay. Now, we don't want it to seem too much like magic that we can just put it down there. What a negative exponent really means is that it's, this number is one over that to the positive 12. So if we had five to the negative three times s to the sixth times one over t to the positive 12, well now we have a bunch of fractions. Yeah. Over one, over one, if we multiply all these fractions together, uh, well, that's what we would get. Okay. But what about this five to the negative three? What should we, should, what should we do with five to the negative three? So we'll just go ahead and erase that. We'll put it in the denominator where it belongs. One over five to the positive three. So what is one over, or sorry, not one over, but what is five to the three? Step, it seems like Tamara intends to move what was in the circle, or what she has circled into the numerator. So she circled this, and wants to move it into the numerator. Seems logical. Y is what she specifically did. It's maybe half right, but why is it incorrect? Okay, hopefully we see that this is like half right, but what's ultimately incorrect about it? Anthony? Only had to do it to the D, right? The exponent of negative one, it only applies to the D, not to the C as well. That's a really common mistake too. We see two numbers multiplied, especially if like this C or whatever it is, doesn't have an exponent written here. We don't think of it as being a, a one, and it'll just kind of be its own thing. And we wrap it up with this other term that does have a negative exponent. So we didn't have to move the C. The C should be down here still. Okay. And then everything else is just like normal. So 3C cubed D uh, squared over 9C. The 3 can cancel with the 9. And we get C cubed D squared over 3C. We could, like there's three C's, you could think of that as, like this is three C's, right? C plus C plus C. So when we say three, we'll just say three factors of C. Right? So we got three factors of C here, we got a factor of C down here, there's three factors of C up here. This C can divide one of these C's, say that one, and we're left with two factors of C. C squared, D squared, over three.
based on the difference of these two polynomials incorrectly, why is Harry's first line incorrect? His very first line right there. Incorrect. Let's take maybe 10 seconds or so. Take a look at it. went wrong here, but uh, it looks like the first part was right. This uh, is like a straight F class. What? The people who gather gather this one, every single one of them is always there. I'm just picking the ones that, there's lots of people who did all right. I'm picking the people who made mistakes. So, so we can learn and laugh at them. So you're singling out the idiots. No, I'm not idiots. Just uh, people who didn't understand them. So in that first step right there, before uh, Molly has even written the new line, she's drawn these arrows. Or maybe she wrote them as she was working it out. But in any, in any case, why'd she do that? Why did she draw those arrows? She knows that every pair of, of numbers of, of turns has to be made and multiplied. And so she makes sure to pair this with everything, that one and that one and that one, and then move on to this one and pair it with everything as well. And probably it's easiest to do it as you're working along than to draw all of them, because then you kind of can get lost as well. So if you draw it, you make the pair, you multiply, move on to the next one, draw that arrow. All right. So, to organize the distribution process. Distribution. 
Now, I don't want that thing to be, you know, turn into, oh, Mr. Stewart said we have to do it that way. Just a recommendation, it is what I do. Uh, maybe not for this one, because I'm, I'm pretty good at, at a binomial type of trinomial by now. But if I had four terms, multiply by five terms or something like that, I would definitely start drawing some arrows so I make sure that everything, every pair gets made. It's a recommendation. If you want to do it some other way, or you don't have a problem here, or whatever, do it that way. Just make sure that every pair gets made, everything in the left gets distributed to everything in the right. Or vice versa, everything in the right gets distributed to everything in the left. But why is Molly's final line in Which like terms didn't she combine? Uh, the negative 20 a squared and the negative 3 a squared. There you go. You should have gotten negative 23 a squared. And she didn't take on the negative 4a. Uh, yeah, she did. Oh, yeah. She got 30a and minus 4a. Yeah. 26a. Um, so, yeah, she just she missed apparently that minus 3a squared. Okay. Uh, as you guys are doing this, how are you guys keeping track? And making sure that you don't miss anything like that. Or are you just missing it? Cross off. Cross off. So you thought that that's what I did, and maybe you thought that was a good idea, Emily? Um when I, I do like the first distribution and then the second one, whatever's like it, or whatever's like it, I put below it. Oh, okay, I like that. So here's the first one. And uh, you shouldn't come up with any, should you? Uh, I suppose it's possible. But so if you if you write down a term and then if you multiply something else together and it's a like term, you just put it below that. Mm -hmm. right? So you will do this one out, you get a third and a, and a squared and, a, and it's the first power. And then when you do this first one, you get squared, so you just put it underneath. So you just start to list them like that. I like that idea, that's a good idea. I just do the shorter ones in my head and the bigger ones I just like, I look like two A. The second one of each one, that's a lot of pronouns, I'm not sure if you put that out. <laughs> and then, um, if there's like three like polynomials on there, oh. I'll just like go, I'll just like work my way down. Three polynomials or three terms? So three polynomials would look like? Parentheses, 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 and another parentheses. Is that what you're talking about? Yeah, there's something like that, and I'll just like work my way down. Well, with this, if I multiply, if, say if I have x minus six, x plus 4, x minus 2. So you're saying you multiply by this and, and then by that? No, I, I'll go like x, x, x4, x, 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 negative 2. And I'll just write them down as they go, and then I just find the lines and then them. So you do x, x, x4, x, x. So think about this, if we had 2 times 3 times 5, right? so this is like your first polynomial, this is like your second one, your third one. You're taking stuff from this first thing, this first thing, multiplying it by this and by this. So that'd be like 6 times 10. Uh, yeah. Instead of 6 times 5. Which wouldn't be right. But it's good, that, that also is a common mistake. Distributing this to there and to there. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, you, don't, you only want to distribute two together at once. So multiplication is this binary operator, it puts two things together, just like we would multiply two times three, be done with it. Then take the result, multiply that result by five. So we only want to distribute one parentheses into a second parentheses, not one into two and a third. Okay. <coughs> All right, so. This, right. Um, didn't.
Okay. Are there any other questions from any other part of the homework? Or is If you have a question, you should ask it. If you don't, you just make sure your name's on it and all that such stuff as it is. It's an example of polynomial. Is that correct? I'm sorry? It's a group of numbers. A group of numbers. So poly meaning many, something like a group. Nomial meaning number. So it'll be made up of a bunch of numbers, or, or what we call terms. Right? Each term is separated by addition, really. Um, so what does each term in a polynomial look like? What's the structure of a term in a polynomial? What does it have? Parentheses? Parentheses doesn't, doesn't need parentheses. Uh, let me give you an example of a polynomial. Actually, just a challenge to someone who might be up to it. Can someone give me an example of a third degree polynomial? Yeah. Uh, x cubed plus g plus x. Plus x. Square. Is it? Squared? Yeah. All right. That's all you want? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so that's a third degree polynomial. Okay. We got x or whatever variable we want. Okay. This will be our input variable. Um, and it's raised to some power, whether it be the third power, or the second power, or what power is this x raised to? One. one. If it was one, then we would have written x there, right? That's just three. Three times one. What power do we need that x to have? Zero. A zero power. Because we never write that. We never write times x to the zero. But we could if we wanted to. Okay, so yeah, we got x to raise it to some power, one, two, three, four, five, zero, whatever. Okay, and then maybe in front of those x's, we'll have a, a multiplier that we call a what? What do we call that number that we multiply the variable by? Coefficient. Co Coefficient. Co Coefficient. So this and this and this. They're all terms. Okay. Well, this one, this one is the constant term. Right? Because remember that x to the zero is one, so it's just the number three by itself. It'll never change. It'll always just be three. That term will always be three. These other terms will change as x changes. If we put different numbers in for x, it will be worth different things. Um. So that whole thing is a constant. This guy right here, the number three. Well, that's a constant. So we should maybe maybe we'll make up another example so we can point these other things out. Maybe five x squared minus two plus six x. Maybe that. What degree is that? Second, second, second degree. How do we know what the degree is? How do we pick it out? The exponent. What's that? The highest exponent, whatever the highest exponent is. Two is the highest, three is the highest, maybe that's the degree. Okay. So this is a term. This negative, negative two, the negative is included, is a term. And this positive six x is a term. These guys right here. Five is the coefficient of x squared. Six is the coefficient of x. This is what they're called. <coughs> okay. uh, so what degree is this again? Second. The second degree. Okay, so you find the x with the highest power. You, that's how you decide what the degree is. And the coefficient that is with that, the one that tells you the degree, that's a special coefficient. It's called the leading coefficient. The one that uh, turns out, uh, this term right here, the one that tells you the degree, the one that has the leading coefficient, turns out to be a really important one in a polynomial. Okay. In a 
polynomial function. So. so that's polynomial. And then if we make it equal to y so that it like has some output variable, then that's what we call a uh, polynomial function. So we've got terms, terms, leading coefficient, coefficients, just regular old coefficients. So let's maybe uh, turn to page 341. Together, we'll decide, well, individually, then we'll discuss it. We'll decide which of these are polynomials and which. So I want you to three through eight, numbers three, numbers three through eight, all of them. I just want you to quickly go through them. Uh, the first thing we're going to do is first decide whether or not they're co they're uh, they're polynomials. Are they polynomials? Do they look like the polynomials we just looked at? Do they look like the polynomials we've been working with, or is there something different about them? So just take a minute and decide whether those are polynomials or not. What does it mean by? Is, uh, is number three a polynomial? Yes. Yes, it is. Okay, let's just move on to number four. Is number four a polynomial? Yes. Polynomial it is. Is number five a polynomial? Yes. Some say yes, some say no. Why, why would you maybe say no? It's got a, oh, a square root in it, okay. It's got a square root in it, maybe that. Maybe that's an issue. What about, what about pi? It's kind of a weird number, right? But, okay, so let's, let's determine whether it's polynomial or not. We got x's, or, or whatever the variable is that we want, x in this case, is raised to powers, right? Positive powers, that's important. Um, and in front of an x raised to a power, you have a coefficient, maybe, okay? Sometimes it's one, sometimes it's something else, right? But it's some number, okay? So here you have x raised to some positive power, that part's okay. It's multiplied by, what is pi? 3.14, it's a weird number, but it is a number. Okay, it's not exactly 3.14, but functionally it's, uh, it's close enough. So yeah, it's just a number, it's a coefficient. The coefficient is pi, All right? Plus, well, is the square root of six a number? It's a real number, or it's a weird number, it is a number, it is a constant term, okay? It doesn't change, so yeah, that actually is a polynomial. <coughs> okay, is this guy a polynomial? Uh, well, we got x raised to powers, so that's good. We get coefficients here, got a constant. Okay, so it kind of looks okay. What would disqualify this as a polynomial? Yeah, raised to a negative two. Okay, so I'm gonna read and say no, that's not a polynomial because of the negative two. This guy, number seven, is that a polynomial? Now we got x to the third, x to the first, we got a constant here. Each term has a, a real number as its coefficient. So yeah, that works out. That is a that is a polynomial. And lastly, number eight, is that a polynomial? Looks all right, we got x to the third, eight x, so that's good, minus four x squared, it's two over x, and then we're just divided by x, so, is that all right, does that work? To be a polynomial, we're gonna look at it as eight x cubed minus four x squared plus two times x to the, right, to a power, what was that, x to the what? To the what? To the negative one. If I want an x to be in the denominator, I'd have to write that to the negative one, x to the negative one. Now what do you think about being a polynomial? It's not a polynomial. 
got to have those positive powers for x. <coughs> okay, so then it talks about the type. Okay, we already know this type. We've been doing it for uh, all of chapter four. Okay, what kinds of functions did we work with in chapter four? Starts with a key. Quadratic. It's raised to the second power. It's a second degree polynomial, and that has the name quadratic. Uh, here's one. What degree is this? Third. Okay. This we call a cubic. Cubic function. Cubic polynomial. So these last two that are left, what degree is this? Four. It's a fourth in this one? Four. Also fourth. Fourth degree polynomials we call four -day. Quadratics and cubics are pretty common to, to use their names. Quartics, we don't usually say quartics, we'll say fourth degree. Because quartics sound weird. Because what? Quartics sounds weird. Quartics sounds weird. At some point, like, if you have a, a shape that has 72 sides, well, a four sided shape is called a square, uh, a three sided shape is called a triangle, uh, a five sided shape is called a pentagon, and you got Six-sided shapes, for, which are septagons, and you got septagons, and octagons, and nonagons, and decagons, and dodecagons, which are, uh, I can't remember if they're 12 or 20 now. But you get the 72 sides, and it gets a pretty old trying to figure out what this nomenclature would be. So you just say, it's a 72-gon, okay? It's like the, the naming of those things gets kind of old. Why do we have to go on Gone, it's... It's probably an old Latin word that means like side. Like, like a pentagon would be a five-sided pentagon shape. Okay, fun. Does that make you feel better? Sure it does. It's a thing called one thousand sided shape. One thousand gone. Mm -hmm. One thousand gone. Okay. Um the next thing we're going to do with a polynomial function, the thing about functions, well, what is the thing about functions? You tell me the thing about functions. What's a function? It's this thing. What does it do? What is it? It's where you can put in a number and it does a bunch of stuff and it pops on another number. Hmm. Couldn't have said it better myself. Put in a number, a bunch of stuff happens, the number comes out. Okay? Uh, and a function is slightly more special than that. A little bit more of a qualification for a function. You can't just input and output things willy nilly, right? There's a little bit of order to it. What's that special rule about a, a function? Every input has to have one output. Every input has to have exactly one output. No more, no less, right? Right? So one can't equal one and negative one. Right, one can't. You know, the output for one as an input can't be one and negative one. Yeah. Okay? So like the square root function, if we take both positive and negative square roots, then it's not a function. Square root of four is plus or minus two, so that's not a function. So we say, ignore the negative one, we'll make it a function by just taking the positive one, so that's now a function. So um, what is it if it's not a function? A function is a special kind of relation. So a relation is something that just relate to input to an output. So if it's not a function, then it's a, a relation. Mm -hmm. yep. So you got vehicles, lots of different kinds of vehicles, and uh, a truck is a vehicle, but if it doesn't fit the qualifications for a truck, it's not a truck, we just say, well, it goes back into the bigger set of vehicles. Right? OK. 
okay, great. Or squares are rectangles, that's another one. All squares are rectangles, but if you have a rectangle, it's not necessarily a square. All right, we're moving on now. So a function takes stuff in, and then things happen, and you get out. You put something in, you get something out. Okay. When you put something in, and you get something out, that's called evaluating the function for that input. Okay, so we're going to evaluate the polynomial. It takes a little bit of uh, attention to detail, and maybe a little bit of time. So I'm just going to give you a polynomial. And I want you to evaluate for some certain value, um, and see how we do. To take this function, this um, kind of a long way from like ten. So here's the polynomial function. Okay, and we want to evaluate it for x. So first of all, I just we should be pretty solid on this now, but I was going to re review um, function notation. The function's called f. The input is x. You see all these x's over here. That's where we input numbers, right? So we're going to input 2. Okay, so all this means is not f times 2, but f with 2 in it. Okay, here's the function f, and we're going to put 2 into all the x's. So it's 2 plus 5 times 2 to the fourth. Uh, times 2 squared, and this 2 to the third, 16, plus 2 to the fourth, and 16, so 5 times 16, 80. 80, minus, this is 3 times 4, negative is not part of the thing that's being cubed, right? Because there's not a parenthesis around it. So we cube the 2, the positive 2, and then make it negative. So we get uh, 96 minus, well this is this comes out to be 20. So 96 minus 20 is 76. So we just evaluated the function for 2. We could evaluate for whatever we want. Evaluate it for 4.3, 4.1, 4 4.3, why not? Anything we want could go in for x, okay? Because any number you can think of, you can uh, take it to the fourth power, you can multiply by itself twice or three times, or you can multiply it by eight, there's like there's no restrictions here. So anything we want could be plugged in for x. Okay. Um, and have you do one more, a little bit, twist to see. <laughs> so just, just hover it just above the, the tablet to, to get it to move. Okay, so you're moving. And then when you press it down, it works a lot like this pen does. You see how you use it. Show us how to put negative 3 in there. So that I can touch this with my actual hand. Right. Yep. Cool. You want to put 4 in there and you want to replace times negative 3 to the third power. Okay. So it's like Gordon, look at this. Fine. I, I can't. No, I would, I would. I would recommend looking at the board. It's. It just takes a minute to get it acclimated. How's that? That looks like it's a big. Big. It's all right. But we can see this. Um. All right. Negative three. <laughs> what? <laughs> What's so ready for this guy? Can I make a mistake? I'm just going to turn down. Is it legible? 
Uh, yeah, we can read it. It's fine. Can I just change that to Y so I can be Y? It'll be wrong, but OK. OK, fine. How do I fix that? Just go to undo over here. That undo arrow. Seven, which I will now do on my calculator. Fair enough. Didn't you write this on your paper, Gordon? I need to put it on my paper. <laughs> Being very explicit. That's good. Negative 108 minus 2 times 81 times negative 3. Plus 486. So y, which is equal to gx. Hold on. Don't take your pen away for a second. There you go. I guess more room. Go ahead. Undoing by giving you. Oh, I was trying to like get rid of my like y equal sign because that's a really lousy. Use the eraser. Where's the eraser? There it is. Is that eraser looking thing? Slice of cheese is what it looks like. <laughs> Square piece of cheese hanging out of his mouth. Okay. Nice job, Gordon. All right, that got done. Uh, but yeah.
Gordon did do a nice job of showing us exactly what all this stuff means if we take uh, a negative 3 to the third, we're multiplying negative 3 by itself three times, likewise 4 to the fifth. Okay. If you do it that way, you're very unlikely to get it wrong, okay, because you make sure that you do everything meticulously the way that it's supposed to. Just watch out for some mistakes. Like, if this is negative 3 to the fourth, what could you say about negative 3 to the fourth? What would the... It would be positive. It would be positive. Whatever the number is, it would be positive. It would be positive 81. Okay? So you want to watch out for that. And uh, it's a really good idea to, to do like Gordon did. Just put, take your x, remove it, replace it with empty parentheses, and then plug your number in. I would say that's a good practice. Anytime you want to replace x with something, take x out, replace it with empty parentheses, and then plug in the thing that's supposed to go in for x. That makes sure that whatever is supposed to happen to, or whatever is happening to x, happens to the number that you're plugging in. Okay? If you don't put in parentheses, you confuse yourself. All right? I also want to show you, you, you can see what you're supposed to be doing and we certainly can use graphic calculators, especially in a single line, to do that whole thing for us if we're, if we're you know, careful about the way we enter it. Okay, so you can see this is what we want to do right here. We'll grab our calculator and do this that. So, yeah, four times negative three to the third power minus two times negative three to the fifth. Make sure that we write it in there correctly, especially that we have parentheses around the negative 3 that we're raising to the third, likewise for the uh, negative 3 to the fifth. So, that's two, or 378. Is that kind of cheating, though? Um, well, I'll give you my... Well, not cheating, but isn't that, like, lazy? I guess it depends. Um, if, if you want to use your calculator and you want to wonder if it's lazy or not, okay, it's lazy if you have no idea what any of these symbols mean and what you're supposed to do. You could not recreate these steps. It's not possible for you because you don't have that understanding. You just jump to your calculator and have it do it for you. That, I would say, is lazy. But if you do understand this and, and you're saying, well, this, that's just going to take quite a while. I, I would come out with the exact right answer if I took the time to do it. This is just going to save me some time so I can get on to other things. Then go ahead and use your calculator to save yourself time. But don't use your calculator to circumnavigate a, a, something you don't understand. But don't use it as a, um, as a workaround for not understanding things. So it's kind of like long division. You should be able to do it, but yeah. once you know how to do it, you never do it. Right, if I want to take uh, 5 divided by 7, especially, something like that, could do it. I could, okay, 5 goes into 7 zero times, so I'm the decimal, and then 5 goes into 70 so many times. We could do that, but we'll just go ahead and uh, do it that way. Right? We'll uh, divide 5 by 7 and, and get the calculator to give us exactly what we would have found with long division, but didn't really want to take the time to do it. All right, so this method of substitution is called direct substitution. We just directly plug negative 5 in where x is supposed to go, and we do the arithmetic. All right. So in a minute, we will learn about something called uh, synthetic substitution, but not just yet. The first thing I want to do is talk about end behavior. Okay, This goes to the graph of these polynomials. If we know very little about graphs, we should at least know that a graph is, well, we've already talked about this so many times, a graph is evil, not evil. It is a, what is a graph? What is a, how does a graph serve us? Representation of our equation. Representation of the solutions to the equation. Right? The x and the y pairs that will solve the equation, will satisfy the equation, make the equation true. Right? But that's not only one Two variables. two variables? Yes. We haven't had three variables yet. Can you do it with three variables? You can. We'll discuss that much later. Can you do it with four? 
think it's hard. But yeah, sure. Graphing it would be difficult, though. But we only have two variables. We have an x variable and a y variable. Okay. For the example we just looked at, uh, we put in negative 3, and we got out negative 378. Okay. So on the graph of that uh, function, we go to negative 3, we go down to negative 378, and we put ourselves a point. Okay, that's, that represents one solution to that equation. And we can do it for lots of other things. Okay. Um, the thing that I want to ask you about is maybe let's use this function right here. Let's take this. So let's say we, we look at uh, this function. Um, end behavior is what you might, uh, what it might sound like, on the ends, okay? The left end and the right end. Um, do you feel like, well, okay, let's look at it this way. Let's say on the right end. What about the right end? What, what, what are we finding way out here to the right? Yeah? Why is it negative 378? I don't know. Did I write that by accident? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it shouldn't be negative. It should be positive. Just to read, I guess. So it should be positive 378. And there's a point way up there. <coughs> now that we're not distracted by that. What, what's going on way out here? What do we find way out here to the right? Yeah? Positive x numbers. Positive x numbers. And the further right we go, the more? Bigger they get. The more bigger they get. The more bigger. The more bigger. We get way out here, the further and further and further we go off the, off the board here, just keep going to the right, we find bigger and bigger and bigger values for x. More bigger, more bigger. Okay, so the question about the end behavior is as we move out to the right and we plug in a bigger and bigger and bigger x values into this function, what will it tend to do? Okay? We're not so much worried about the exact values because we don't want to be plugging in numbers forever, but we do want to kind of know where will this graph go? Will it go way up here? Will it go way down here? Will it maybe flatten out and approach a single number? What will it do? Right. So, do you think there's a way to, to look at this function right here and determine that? As I put in really big values for x, what kind of outputs will I get? Bigger and bigger y. Smaller. Get bigger and bigger? Smaller and smaller. Smaller and smaller. Smaller yeah. together. Well, those are two options. Some functions also <coughs> will just get closer and closer to, say, the number six. Why the number six? We'll just have a discussion about this and decide whether this does that or if it goes just way up into the positive y values or way down into the negative y values. Anybody make a guess about that? To help us along. Um, let's start with this little oh, sketch right here. There you go. I took it away. Okay, so here's, a, here's another function. But here, here's what I've done is I have allowed uh, this number, this coefficient, this constant value uh, to be changeable. I can change this by changing this guy right here. Okay. What if I can get it back to one? I can change this one with this slider. I can make it positive, I can make it negative. Uh, and this C controls this number right here. Okay, so we can do that uh, all we want. And this guy right here controls what X is, right? The value that you plug in for, for X into those two things. Okay? So again, I'm asking you, as we put again, put in bigger and bigger and bigger values for X, what do you think the Y values of this function will be? Greater, like big positive numbers. Yeah. Okay, why do you think that? Seems reasonable. We're putting in value.
rise for x, and all these numbers are going to be positive, and if you add a bunch of positive numbers together, it's just going to get bigger and bigger and bigger, right? Okay. What about if I change this guy right here to negative? Okay, so here's what we're seeing. This y value right here, 1, right, is what this term is worth when you put in 1 for x. Okay. This green one right here is what this middle term is worth, negative, you know, like 5 and a half or something like that. Well, negative 5 went through and put an x as 1. And then this blue one is just like this guy right here. And that one's always just going to be 1. That's not going to change as x changes. Does that make sense? And over here, what we see is the pink one. You can see kind of a pinkish hue to this. Plus that green one, which is negative. And then adding back on that one, so it brings us back up to here. So right here is our final y value, right there at the top of that blue one. Okay. So now that I've made this at negative 5.3x, now if we keep putting in bigger and bigger values for x now, Will the, will the outputs tend to still get bigger and bigger positive? Because we're subtracting stuff off of it, so. They'll get bigger and bigger smaller. Bigger and bigger in the negative direction? Okay. Does everybody agree it'll get bigger and bigger in the negative direction? Because we're subtracting stuff, okay. Before we take this x and put in big values for x, slide it over to the right. Is there anybody who thinks that we'll get big, 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 big positive numbers? I think so. You think so? Why do you think so? Because of x squared. What about x squared would way over just plain x. Just we got plain just plain minus. x times a negative 5.3, right? Yeah. Well, here we have x times another x, not just times a, a 5.3. Yeah. So at some point, does it seem like this x squared term would be bigger than this minus 5.3 times x? So we kind of dip down. It'll kind of dip down and be, be in the negative values, but eventually Reese is saying at least it'll get bigger. And just be bigger and be positive, big positive numbers, and never come back down. So there's no way to make this go down forever. Um, well, we'll talk about that. Brett, you have to tell me. Does the outcome depend entirely on what your top three numbers are? Well, if we lock in these three numbers, like polynomial, right, it has its coefficients, those parts are set. And then as the x varies, um, I would say, yeah, in a way, in a way, it does depend on that. Because if you have just all ones, like you have four, uh -huh. no matter how much you change your x, yeah. is y going to stay the same as x? Is y going to stay the same as x? What do you mean by that? Okay, we'll change our x to 5, if I can move it that much. Change our x to 5. Okay, so this part's going to be 5 squared, so that's 25, that's way up there. Right? And this one's going to be worth 5, 1 times 5. And this one's going to be worth just 1. And this one is going to be, add all those numbers together. Right? We add the 25, then the 5, and the 1. And this keeps going one. up and up and up, right? Um, well, what if we make like we make this b number a really big negative, we subtract things off of it. Right? Let's see what happens there. Okay. Well, let's take our five to be a little bit smaller. Okay. Well, now look what happens. That x squared term. Uh, let's see what can I. Well, yeah. Look what look what's happening. When x is uh, 5, but this b term is negative 20, then the x squared term is going way up there. But then that second term, with just plain x, is subtracting into the negatives. And then way down there, we'll add on a 1 as well, so it'll come back up to 1. But ultimately, the, the final value is a negative value. Okay. Well, can I bring that, back, bring that final result back up into the positives? By doing what? Make x bigger. And, oh, there it is. There it just happened. Right? Still negative, but once x is big enough, at some point, x will be so big that when we, even when we subtract 20 times x, it won't matter because x squared is so much bigger than just minus 20x. Right? 
And as x gets bigger and bigger, it just keeps going. We can't even see it anymore. It's so big, positive. And the bigger I make x, the bigger the final result will be, the bigger the y value will be. Okay. What if we were to make this number negative in front of x squared? It would always be negative, so let's take uh, A, make it negative 1. Negative 1. Well, well here we have positive values because uh, x is negative 0.1 which makes this quite small. Uh, this is it's kind of small, but it's positive because negative 20 times negative 0.1 is a positive number, and then one's always positive, right, for adding one. Right. But if x is to be more and more negative, okay, well, this x squared term is always going, just the x squared, not the negative in front of it, the x squared will be, Just the x squared, just this. Oh, positive. Positive. Whether you square positive or negative, you always get a positive number. Okay? So that part's always going to be positive, which means if you multiply that always positive number by a negative, this will always be negative. Unless it's zero. Okay? So this number that's negative will become very, very big. Okay? As x becomes either way negative or way positive. Get negative enough that x squared term is so big that it will force everything into the negative. Okay. Um, an unfortunate thing about it, I'm just going to write out as much as you can. That was the last one.